Um, all right, so today is Tuesday, July 15th at 10 o'clock a.m. This is Sarah Blanc, and I'm here interviewing Sarah Knight for the IPPD Oral History Project. Uh, just to start out, Ms. Knight, could you explain um, how you initially became involved in IPPD? Okay, so I was a student here in the Electrical Engineering Department, and one of our requirements for graduation was a senior design or IPPD. So we had to do a design project, and those were our choices. And I decided I wanted to do IPPD, uh, mostly because the people that had done it before me said it was great, and I liked the idea of being able to work with a team and getting that experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I did it, I think it was 2000 to 2001, so fall 2000 to spring 2001, I did IPPD. And then later, since I actually didn't stay with engineering, I went into law and I practiced as a patent attorney. Um, while I was in law school, I had an opportunity to actually work again with IPPD with their new ITV program. And so I was in their seminal attempt a year in trying to get a law student involved uh, with ITV. And so I did that, I think it was um, 2005 to 2006. And then I had graduated law school and I came back as a coach for ITV for the law student awesome. coming after me. So okay. I've been involved with IPPD and then ITV for quite some time. And what is ITV? Um, it's, uh, I believe it stands for Innovative Technology Venture. Okay. I might miss what the I stands for, because <laughs> Integrated Product Process Design is IPPD. Um, so I think it's Innovative Technology Venture. Double check that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what are some of your favorite memories from the program? Well, from IPPD itself, I'd say the memory that sticks out in my mind the most is when we went down. So, my project was with a U.S. Special Operations Command, U.S. SOCOM. They have uh, they're based out of Tampa, and so we went down to Tampa and we went on to the the area there where they were, and we met with our liaison. And he was just um, this, I thought of him as like Paul Bunyan. I don't know, he, he had the strongest handshake I have <laughs> ever come across. And it was great to actually hear from, I guess, who our client was, what their specifications and needs were. And he was just great about explaining, hey, this is for the Navy SEALs. It's going on this rigid inflatable boat. And you need to make something that these guys are not going to tear off and throw away. And so it was real, that was probably the highlight of um, my IPPD experience was going down there and really getting that like, oh, this is not just a project being done for class, this is being done for people. And that's what I really liked. Awesome. Um, who were some of your academic mentors who made an impact in your early student career? I'd say, well, at UF, or I'd say, really it starts younger than. Include how, whoever you want. Um, <laughs> I would say probably what led me to engineering and, and made the strongest impact bringing me into this direction was um, in high school, was a teacher, I had a physics teacher, uh, Mrs. Waters at St. Petersburg High School, and she hated our class. Uh, and she just, she totally ripped us to shreds, and I said, I have to show her that I can do it. And um, that sort of challenge is what drawed my attention to physics and my eventual decision to go into electrical engineering. It was that sort of enjoyment of that challenge of physics that led me to do engineering. And then once I got in, I was a transfer student. Um, I went to a community college and then transferred in. And so it was pure core. It was really hard, really challenging. And it was the people in um, the advising office, Lori Edverson, she's still there. I think mm -hmm. she hasn't quite retired yet. Um, just to say, hey, here's an outline of how you can get through this program. And uh, combined with some of the professors, really the standout ones were um, Dr. Bozeman, who happened to have been my coach for IPPD. Um, I had it for three courses, so <laughs> I obviously really liked his approach. Um, I would say Dr. Fox and Eisenstadt, those two um, to have. And then I don't want to forget um, Dr. Mark Law 
uh, he was just probably really instrumental in keeping that like passion and enjoyment uh, for the t for the area and he introduced me to other women that were in engineering too and so that was great to then have a support system yeah cool and how about law school did you have anyone influence what you were doing there not really um, when I was in engineering I decided I, I actually after I graduated undergrad I worked um, as an engineering co-op at AMD um, in Austin, Texas, uh, but I thought to myself, I don't want to be an engineer for the rest of my life. I don't really want to work in a cubicle. I want to do something that still keeps me around engineers, but that um, I don't feel like I've got, I, I don't feel like I, I can't really do much more than that. And so I thought law school was where I would go. Um, but I wasn't quite ready to do law school. I really loved what I was learning about and what I was doing with engineering, so I decided, well, I'll go get my master's. And then if I can't get into law school, that's okay, I'll go for a PhD. <laughs> it won't be a problem, I'll still be doing something I enjoy. Um, and so I came back here for school, got my master's, um, and then I knew when I got into law school that I was gonna do patent law. I was working at a law firm here in town, um, interning, and I knew that was what I wanted to do. And so while I was in law school, I wouldn't say there was really anyone that led me to do what I'm doing now. I kind of knew ahead of time, this is what I'm gonna do. And I just took advantage of the people that were there and the resources that were there to help me uh, achieve that goal. Cool, cool. Um, how has ITV contributed to your career? I'd say ITV really um, opened up my eyes to how important business is in what we do and the driving force behind innovation. And the ITV program has a little background to it. What it does is it takes a University of Florida technology through the Office of Technology Licensing and creates a startup around it. So there's an engineering team, there's still the engineering students that would have signed up for IPPD. Um, and I don't think I explained it before, but the IPPD program, what it does is it takes students from across disciplines and have them work on a project for um, a company. So a company has specifications, they say here's a problem that we have, and then this cross-disciplinary team gets together, and we've, I think there's like one business person but their contributions are more, at that point, since we already have a product in mind, is um, what's you know, the cost gonna be behind this, if they're gonna try to do this for real, um, as opposed to attempting to create a whole business plan or anything around it. The rest of the engineering students developed the product. My group had two electrical engineering students, one materials and one mechanical. And so it was interesting to work with different types of engineering students. Um, so with ITV though, you've got um, the engineering student group, you have a business school team, and you have then what they introduce the legal into it. And um, the Office of Te Technology Licensing, they pick a technology, uh, they go to the business school students, who then come up with a business plan, they look at what the market could be, um, because the technology can go anywhere. We don't know what their first product would want to be, they determine what that is, they then work with the engineering students to come up with the, what the product could be based off of this technology. Um, and so it's so, they could just do, I mean, it, it, it can, it's so challenging, right? Mm -hmm. That you go, it's not like you've got some specifications that you can design to, all of a sudden you have to come up with what those specifications are. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess those are the, that, that's really ITV and what I got out of it was experiencing that um, and being able to take that now, I mean, for me as a patent attorney, one of the most important things for me to do is to align intellectual property of, a, of one of my clients with their business strategy. There's a lot of different things that you do, there's costs involved, and to be able to see what it's like from the ends of the you know, business engineering and to see sort of that interaction and the difficulties with it mm -hmm. uh, really help with what I'm doing now. Um, what are the top attributes of an IPPD coach? I'd say the top one is to be available um, because for IPPD, I think it really helps if the coach has sort of in the back of their mind a roadmap 
Mm -hmm. um, at least an attempt to say, well, here's how you continue to move forward. Um, and so the top, I think, attribute would be to be available for questions, both technical in nature as well as um, how to interact with others. Mm -hmm. So kind of a mediator. Too. Yes, I think mediated. They, they, <laughs> they definitely need to work on their mediation skills to <laughs> help with uh, coaching a team. And what are the top attributes of an IPPD student? Um, I think with IPPD as a student, you want to be a good team player. Uh, that's about follow through and communication. If you volunteer for something or if you're assigned to something, it's really important that you follow through and do it because other people are counting on you. Uh, of course, it helps if you're brilliant and you come up <laughs> with great ideas and, and you can throw them into the pot when, they're, when you're designing. Um, but I really think that uh, it just goes a long way to also be able to, if you commit to doing something, that you do it. Okay. My favorite questions. Describe the ITV program in one word. That's horrible, right? Like one <laughs> sentence is so much easier. Um, so you said the IPPD program. Oh, first the ITV program. Okay, the ITV to... program. I actually yeah. had to go online and look in a thesaurus and determine <laughs> what's going to be the best way to describe how I would view it. And um, constructive was the word that I came up with, is ITV is constructive. It provides you this, and I would say also entrepreneurial. I gave you two words, <laughs> but <laughs> um, constructive and entrepreneurial. You can pick which one you want okay. to use. <laughs> and then how about the IPPD program? All right, this one is heuristic. Okay, you're going um, to define that one. <laughs> it's, it's because it's an experiential learning. It's about, um, it's about improving your methodology and attempting through sort of experimenting and experience uh, to arrive at your ultimate design. And I, I think heuristic then would be the best one word for IPPD. All right, cool. I learned a new word today. <laughs> <laughs> um, and finally, what makes the program special? I think that the in engineering, at least, there are so few opportunities to really hone and practice your communication skills and um, interacting with other people. I mean, you need to do that throughout your career, whether you're in engineering proper or you choose sort of a tangential to engineering you know, career, uh, that IPPD really provides you with almost, I, I don't want to say it's your first opportunity, but I think it's your first in-depth opportunity to have to not only communicate with others, work on a team to come up to a final result, but also to really experience how what you're doing as an engineer affects the public and affects other people outside of just your sphere, because you're working to solve a problem for someone else or get a product out there. Yeah. for someone else to enjoy. And is there anything else you want to add before we conclude the interview? I think I covered everything. Okay, <laughs> so. great. It was a great interview. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> um. Thank mm -hmm. you.